Team, what's going on? Seismic PE prep number 17 coming at you, so let's get into it. A three-story hospital in San Francisco with a steel moment resisting frame has a calculated design base shear of 100 kips using the equivalent lateral force ELF procedure. The tributary dead loads of each story, including walls, are shown. The distributed base shear at the third story is most nearly what? Uh, you know, most of the time, instead of level three, I think in our design documents, we'd call that the roof level, but in this case, the figure said level three. So they're looking for the very highest level of this structure, AKA the roof level. Each story of our three-story building is the same height at 15 feet each for a total building height of 45 feet. Uh, something great that was given to us is the uh, dead load of each story. They did say that this includes walls. So when we think about this, if you were tasked with calculating this, like you would on any type of project where seismic design may govern or needs to be checked, um, you're taking your, your self weight of the structure plus maybe some odds and ends uh, specialties uh, per the code requirements, depending on what is being housed inside of your building. You need to take the flooring assembly, but also take half of the uh, weight of the walls above that floor in question and half of the weight of the walls below that floor in question. Uh, but they provided that for us here today because that is something that can get, you know, a little time sensitive. And we all know that these example problems mimic the test problems and the test problems are supposed to be quick, couple of minutes each and moving on to the next, okay? The question overall is asking us to find the distributed base shear at the third story. Kind of a weird way to ask that in my opinion, um, I most often understand this as finding the story force, meaning we need to go about calculating the vertical distribution of our seismic forces. The seismic forces are given at 100 kips down at the base. And so some percentage at each floor is going to see that 100 kips. It might be 33, 33, 33. It might be 100 at the top and zero at the floors below. I highly don't suggest that that's going to happen. Um, it could be 50, 25, 25, you get the picture. It's some percentage at each floor and all three floors combined equal the base shear of 100 kips down at the bottom. All of your story forces added together need to sum to the base shear that you calculated, okay? We're gonna find ourselves in section 12.8, equivalent lateral force procedure of the ASCE 716 because that is the procedure that they used in order to derive their base shear. So we need to use this same procedure to get our vertical distribution of our seismic forces. A quick thing to note that isn't critical to this problem, but will help you in your studies, is on the page prior, we need to remember when we are going through the design process, you start earlier on, you don't just jump straight to equivalent lateral force. You have to go through and make sure that you're permitted to do that design procedure. And that's this table here, 1261, tells you, depending on your structure, um, and your structural characteristics, bang, if you are P permitted or NP not permitted. This table is kind of silly in a sense because everything is permitted um, except this guy right here. So using the equivalent lateral force procedure, if you don't fall into any of these categories, then you fall under all other structures and you can't do an equivalent lateral force procedure. I believe that they have updated this table or they, they display this information differently in the upcoming code cycle change to the ASCE 722, but I'd have to take a look. I can't remember if they did or not. This isn't part of the problem today, but you know, you're learning, right? So you can see through here, what well, we have a three-story structure. Let's, let's give it a shot. Are we even permitted to do ELF? I know they said it, but are we? Let's put on the thinking caps. We know we're in San Francisco, California. Anybody who lives in the continental US or is designing, in the continental US knows that California has very high um, seismic forces, is a, is a very seismically active region. Ayo, Carlanglo Nilo, thanks for subscribing. During recording, big plus for you. Come on in the auditorium. Anyway, so it is likely that your seismic design category is going to be D and above. There may be some areas where it's C and lower, but highly unlikely, especially San Francisco, very high seismic region. It's a hospital, so we know that's an essential facility. So that's a risk category four structure. So we're not one, we're not two. Um, all right, so that's not us. Structures of light frame construction. We know we have steel moment frames, so not us. Structures with no structural regularities and not exceeding 160 feet in structural height. We know we're only 45 feet, so we're well below the height threshold for this one, but we don't know if we have any irregularities in the structure. That info wasn't given because that's not the problem, I get it. I get it. You're getting testy. I get it. Let's just answer the problem, but maybe we're doing a mini problem. 
It's about the journey, not the, not the final solution, right? So we don't exactly know if we fall under this one. Structure's exceeding 160 feet. We know that ain't us either. We're, we're at 45 feet. Structure's not exceeding 160 feet in structural height. That's us. And having only horizontal regularities of type two, three, four, or five, or vertical regularities four, five A, or five B. So a bunch of potential regularities that you could have, which open up, opens up more options where your building might fall into this permitted area. I would say here today, even though they didn't give us the info, we could safely say that we'd fall into this category, making an assumption there. You don't wanna be making assumptions, all right, in the structural engineering industry, but with your limited information, it's likely that you fell into this category, which means you were permitted to use the equivalent lateral force procedure in section 12.8, and so they did. They already did this for us. The base shear was 100 kips. They found that. We'll find ourselves here, 1283, vertical distribution of seismic forces. Ding, 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 that is us. The lateral seismic force, if I get this out of the way, F sub X in kips induced at any level shall be determined from the following equations. All right, all right, so this is what we need up at our third floor or the roof level. So we need C sub VX times V, our base shear. V we already have, so we just need C C VX. That's gonna kick us into this equation. And oh man, you look at it and you're like, pretty crazy, a lot of variables. I have limited time, I'm freaking out. There's not a lot to do here. It can look scary, but it's, it's not bad. I suggest, as you will see as we move through this problem, you'll create a little table, get used to doing that table, make that such a solid process in your head and then you never forget it and then you're good to go and then this doesn't look so scary anymore well they define everything below here so that's nice we don't we're not left in the dark w sub x and w sub i are portions of the total effective seismic weight of the structure w they gave that remember that's our story weight located or assigned at level i or x okay so all of that was already given to us h sub i and h sub x height from the base of level i or x all right, so those are just heights. We know 15 feet for each story. So all of that's already defined, easy. So actually the only thing we still need to find is this K component right here. An exponent related to the structure's period as follows. All right, so in order to get K, we need to determine what the period of the structure is. Can we do that? Yes, we can. If we rewind a little bit, you'll see that we are permitted in 12821 to use the approximate fundamental period. Actually, 1282 permits you to use the approximate fundamental period, which then kicks you down to 1281 or 12821. And it says the approximate fundamental period T sub A, A meaning approximate, right? The nomenclature actually does make sense when you really look at it. You just use with this really simple equation. Three variables, C sub T and X are determined in table 1282, table. Look at that, 1282 is right below you. C sub T and X, very nice. Very nice. And H sub N is the structural height as defined in 11.2. So you could go back, that's the definition section, but it's just the height of your structure from seismic base, okay? So for us here today, that's the 45 feet. It's the three stories, it's the roof level, okay? We're gonna drop ourselves down here because we need C sub T and X, and it's based on your structure type. And it's specifically based on your vertical lateral system type, all right? Because this is the seismic parameters. So this is the lateral design of your structure. It doesn't care if you're using wide flange columns or HSS columns for your gravity framing. It's talking about your lateral system components. We know we have steel moment resisting frames. That's gonna give us a C sub T of 0 0.028 and an X of 0 0.8. Combine those into this equation and plug in 45 for H sub N that's gonna get you your proximate uh, fundamental period. So let's let's do that right now. That's gonna get you 0 0.59 seconds, because it's a period, all right? Now, if we jump back to 1283, and we go back to the last variable that we need for our equation, we can see that K is dependent upon these three things. Well, for structures that have a period of 0 0.5 or less, K is one. For structures having a period of 2.5 or more, K is two. For structures, between periods shall be determined by linear interpolation between one and two. I mean, fortunately, we find ourselves just over the threshold of 0 0.5, we have 0 0.59, so we need to do linear interpolation. Once we interpolate, we see that K equals 1.045, which makes sense. It should be very, very close to one because we were just over that 0 0.5 threshold. So 
This is the table that I'm talking about. Commit this to memory, do a couple of these and get used to writing this out because it keeps everything nice and neat and clear. We have our levels for row, uh, column one. We have our associated heights at each of those levels, not the story height of each story. But as you move up, it's cumulative, okay? So the roof level or level three for this problem is at 45 feet. It is not that the third floor is 15 feet tall. W sub X, that's the proportion of seismic mass at each floor that I have in kips here. You can do it in pounds. You could do your height H sub X in feet like I've done. You can do it in inches. So long as you remain consistent throughout this table, okay? Because things will cancel out one another. Then you take both of these and you plug them in to that equation, which is the top component of your total equation that we saw in the ASCE 716 to get your seismic uh, vertical distribution of forces. And then once we have three, two, one, we need to sum them all up to get the sum because that will be the denominator of that equation. And then from there, you will get your three uh, ratio numbers. It'll be a, uh, a number that is less than one and all three of them will sum to one. And then you'll use those ratios and multiply by V, your base shear, to get a vertical distribution or a story force due to seismic effects at each story. All right, let's go through the process. For our first floor, we get 8,471.98. Again, if you kept it in pounds, that will be a significantly larger number, 13,984.65. And then for the third floor, AKA our roof, 16,022.43. All of those sum together, 38,479.07. And now we can start solving for our story ratios. Take that number, plug it into the numerator, then take this summation, plug it into the denominator. That gets you 0 0.416. The second floor gets you 0 0.363. Usually you only carry these out two decimal places, but for this, I just decided three. So here we are. And then 0 0.221. So if we do a spot check and we sum these up together, they should equal 1.0. 432, that's 789. 162, that's another 9. 63 is 9, and 1 is 10. So that clears out to 1.0. We're good to go. Now, to get your story force, we can remember that our equation, the first equation, simply fx equals cvx times v. Well, this honking thing is cvx. Remember that. So, to get fx, it's just these numbers times our V, which is 100 kips. And that was given in the problem. So that's gonna get you 41.6 kips. It's easy because it's 100 kips for base year, but normally you're gonna have some odd number for your base year, and then you just need to multiply it. 36.3 kips, 22.1 kips. And again, as it should, as basic math works out, that should all sum to 100 kips, which is the base year. So you, again, it's another checkpoint to make sure, hey, I've done this correctly, I haven't, crossed the wire somewhere and done something incorrectly. Um, but that's what we're looking for. So I would say if we go green here, that is 41.6 kips. Let's take a look at our answers. 41.6, I'd say the closest thing here is gonna be answer B of 42 kips. I'm satisfied with that. It's a little conservative, so you can move forward from there in your design and know you have just a little smidge of fluff in there. Hey, give yourself a pat on the back. You made it through another seismic PE design example problem. If you're not one who regularly designs in seismic zones, this could be more challenging, all right? Or if you are and you just needed some, some refresh to get your mind sharp going into the exam, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you knocked this one out. If you have no idea what you're doing here and you're like, I'm just vibing, I'm just chilling, doesn't matter, subscribe. I'd love you to be here. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for interacting in all the ways that you have on the channel. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.